Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little and today we are going to be going through five tips to help you crush small stakes cash games. I know that is a game that many of you play, you all tell me on a very regular basis that you want more small stakes cash game content. So here we are, these are my top five tips for you to crush those games. And if you stay tuned until the end of this webinar, I will give you completely for free my cash game cheat sheet that is a ton of tips and things to talk about while you are playing poker. So make sure you stick around till the end and I will give that to you. So for those who do not know me, I know there are a lot of new people here today. Who am I? I'm Jonathan Little. I cash for over $7 million in live poker tournaments. I'm the head coach at pokercoaching.com. I'm the commentator on many poker shows, maybe commentating on a WPT final table or two on the stream coming up in the near future, so look for that. And I'm the author of 14 best-selling poker books. You may say, how could you possibly write so much about poker? Well, there, poker is a big game. There's a lot to it. There are cash games, tournaments, mindset issues, physical tell issues, bankroll issues. It's a big, big game, and I discuss that thoroughly in my books. Just recently, I did cross the $7 million mark in live poker tournaments. I won the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open, the $2,000 buy-in tournament they had for $97,000. That was fortunate. It's always good to run hot and um, bring home another title. Also, I am a poker coach. I teach many, many students. Um, you know, if you, you all are members of PokerCoaching.com, I'm teaching all of you there. Joe Forsman, one of our members, said, Hey, Jonathan, just wanted to thank you. The changes you made to your game based on the research and insight, on my research and insight, has been all the difference. And this is from Joe Forsman, who won a bracelet just this year for $397,000. It's a pretty good score. Um, we've also had many, many other students who have succeeded. We've had uh, Blas Zerjao last year who turned $20 into $1.3 million on Party Poker. We had a few people win World Series Circuit main event rings last year. So... Students are having a good result, which is exactly what we are going for. Also, here is another one of my students, just GTO, whose online poker graph we're looking at. He's been putting in a decent amount of volume, and if you are a good cash game player, this is the kind of graph that you want. You just want to be able to sit there, grind out the hands, not even playing all that high of stakes, but winning right here, as we see, $16 every 100 hands. And when you're playing online, you can play 400 hands per hour. So look, this is just a solid $64 an hour win rate, despite not even playing very high stakes, right? And this is what I want to teach all of you. And I know some of you may say, isn't Jonathan a tournament player? But I have spent significant time playing cash games. I mean, for four or five years, I just went to Bellagio every day and played 510 to 1020 to the bigger games whenever they ran. And whenever I do have a free moment, I try to play cash games um, in my spare time, just mainly for research purposes. Um, just two days ago, I was at Foxwoods randomly. One of my friends wanted to go to go play the World Series circuit event there. And um, the day after the tournament, we just sat and played cash games for an hour. And it was great. I won, uh, won 200 bucks, not really doing anything fancy. I just sat there. I hung out. I played good, fundamentally sound poker. We got a few bluffs through, and we won 200 bucks. And these are the kind of things that I want to be teaching you. So... Tip number one, stop calling preflop raises with junk. Look, so many players, even yesterday when I was playing 2-5 no limit, people were buying in for $500 or more. They would just, there would just be four people limping in and seeing the flop. It's like, what are you doing? You cannot limp in with the 9-5 offsuit or even the 9-5 suited. And this is especially true if the rake is high. And I do know that in a lot of small stakes games, the rake is generally pretty high. So if the rake is high, you want to play relatively few pots, but win most of them. Because imagine, um, let's just say you play a lot of hands and you end up winning like 53% of them on average, of course, if you're heads up in each of them. You're just going to end up giving away all of that profit to the rake. But if you play fewer hands and you win 65% of them, which is not out of the realm of uh, possibility, if you are playing a much better range than your opponents are, you're gonna end up paying that two or three or four percent rake, and that's not so bad whenever you have a 65% edge, whereas it's quite bad if you only have 53, right? So, quite often, the right strategy is to just be kind of tight and play better cards than your opponents. This is not going to work as you move up to the higher stakes games, 
because the rake is less, also your opponents play better, but especially in the small stakes games, you can just play better cards than they do, and your opponents will blindly pay you off. Pay them, pay you off. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this scenario. As you can see, we have a limp under the gun, a limp in second position, a limp from the low jack seat, and now it's on us in the cutoff with nine seven of spades. So ask yourself here, what would you do? And I think really we have a few options, right? We can raise if we want to have a decently wide raising range. We can limp if we want to try to see a flop with the sand, or we can just fold. And if you're, the rake in your game is especially high, you should just fold. If the rake is especially low, you should probably limp and see a flop. And if the rake is uh, kind of normal, eh, it's, I think it's still between limp or fold. I'm really not raising in this scenario all that often, and that's because 9-7 suited flops pretty well. And also, we don't necessarily know what the under-the-gun limper is doing. I discuss this in my book, Strategies for Beating Small Six Poker Cash Games, that you really need to figure out the limper's strategies, right? If the limper's gonna limp re-raise a lot, clearly you don't wanna be raising 9-7 suited because you really wanna see a flop with it, right? So this is a scenario where you should probably be limping or folding, and I think the answer is just to fold way more often than many small stakes players think. They think, all right, I can call here, but then you have to realize 10% of the pot gets raked away, more of it's gonna get raked away on the flop, and I mean, yes, 9-7 suited flops decently well, but it's not amazing. So look, I, I think 9-7 suited is like right on the cusp, which is why I use it as an example. If I had ace-10 offsuit, I would definitely raise. If I had king-jack offsuit, I would definitely raise. Clearly I'd raise all the good hands. Uh, like pocket nines, for example, I would also raise. With a reasonably strong drawing hand, like jack 10 of spades, I would either call or raise, one of the two. With pocket sixes, I would basically always call because pocket sixes flops reasonably well. And then with um, slightly weaker hands, like nine six suited or nine eight offsuit, I would always fold. Some people think that the connectors are playable in this spot, like nine eight offsuit or six five offsuit or like even jack 10 offsuit's marginal. Um, but these hands are not particularly great and you need to shy away from playing them. So that is tip number one. You need to stop playing junky hands just because you think you have to see the flop or because that's what everyone else is doing. You have to understand that most people model their behavior after the people around them. And you don't want to model your behavior after losing or break even small stakes players who have not been able to move up, right? You need to model your play after the best players in the world and the players who are beating the game that you want to be playing. So don't copy the opponents. All right, next, you need to stop defending your small blind. Even though you will be getting a discount because you already have half a big blind in the pot, when you're facing a raise, you should fold your small blind most of the time. Being out of position is a significant detriment to you being able to play profitably. And especially when you're multi-way, you can't defend without a hand that has substantial implied odds. So what I see happen all the time is middle position will raise, button will call, and then someone will have a hand like king nine offsuit in the big blind, or the small blind, either one, um, especially when facing a big raise. And this is just a scenario where you have to fold because you're gonna be incredibly dominated and you're out of position. So you're gonna drastically under-realize your equity and you're gonna be dominated a lot. That is the exact opposite of where you wanna be. So let's take a look again. Here we have nine seven of spades again, facing an $8 raise at one two, and it folds to us in the small blind. This is an easy fold. If you are going to play this hand, you can three bet it to about $32, about four times the initial raise. But even then, I'm almost never doing that. I'm just folding almost every time. And especially as your opponents use bigger raise sizes, like $8 or $15 in some one two games, you need to be very tight. It's almost like you're playing a game with no blinds if your opponents are making it $15 preflop at one, two, no limit, right? Because the $3 you put in each orbit is pretty minimal when people are just blasting it. So you can just sit there and play good cards. And you really wanna make sure you're staying out of trouble in the worst spots at the table. And when people raise big, the big blind doesn't become nearly as defendable as let's say in a tournament when you're facing a min raise and there's no rake, I mean, besides the rake you paid to enter, but there's no rake in each individual pot, right? So this is a scenario where you simply must fold. So which hands would I be continuing with in this spot? I mean, even here, I'm not, I'm not playing a whole lot of hands and a lot of them I'm just gonna be re-raising, but um, I think I'm just gonna be re-raising a pretty strong linear range of like ace 10 offsuit, maybe a lot of the ace X suiteds, maybe some of the better suited connectors like nine eight suited you could probably three bat. 
um, jack 10 suited you could so the hands that you can consider flat calling are the best suited connected hands that's going to be jack 10 suited queen jack suited king queen suited queen jack suited did i say that already <laughs> king jack suited so those those really good hands like that the medium pairs like um nines to sixes or nines to five i would just fold the lower pairs probably and then ace queen maybe king queen and ace jack those are the hands i would consider flatting with in this scenario everything else is getting three better folded um, but really, the, the, you could just 3-bet everything you wanted to play. And if you look at the strategies that you use in tough online games against an early position raiser, you only have a 3-betting or folding range from the small blind. You don't flat anything. Obviously, in small states games where some players are way... Uh, they just play very poorly after the flop. You don't really care if you call on the big blind calls, right? So then maybe you can justify calling a little bit more. But if you do study GTO strategies, which we'll actually be discussing a little bit later in this webinar, um, you really don't even need a flatting range here. But again, always adjust to take advantage of your opponents. Next, speaking of that, you need to three bet more often. If you only three bet with your best hands, your opponents will know that when you three bet that you have a premium hand. So you may say, yeah, but my opponents are oblivious. And you know, okay, fine. If your opponents really are going to just pay you off with like ace nine offsuit when you three bet with your aces or your kings, then maybe you can just only three bet the best hands. But you need to be three betting with a wider range. Now, there are two types of ranges you can use. If your opponents are calling stations, meaning they're just going to call every time you three bet, you want to three bet with a linear range of the best hands that flop well and some non premium hands, like say ace jack offsuit for value, right? Because the logic is, is that when your opponent raises, you three bet them with ace jack, they're always going to four bet you with better hands and they are always going to call with um, worse hands. So essentially, you get very clear information about where you stand. Um, as your opponents get a little bit better, you're gonna want to start three betting with a polarized range. This is especially against people who will fold to three bets or will be not calling your three bet so often. And as you move up in stakes, you're very often gonna find that these are the players you run into. Um, and a polarized range is a range consisting of your best hands as well as some hands that are not quite good enough to call with. So take a look at these ranges. This is roughly what you should be doing on the button against um, you know, reasonable razors in, in cash games to some extent. These are relatively soft cash games. These are not like super tough cash game charts. But for the most part, this is roughly what I am doing in the games, in the small and medium stakes cash game. So take a look at this uh, button versus under the gun chart here. You see we're three betting for value with aces, kings, queens, and ace, king. These are hands we're just happy getting it all in with for 100 big blinds. We're also three betting as a bluff with some hands that aren't quite good enough to call with. It's going to be ace queen, ace jack, king queen, and then ace five suited, ace four suited, and seven six suited. And then we're going to call with all of these hands in green that flop very well. And that's something you're going to find is almost always good is to just call with the hands that flop very well. As you see against the cutoff, we are getting after it a little bit more, right? So we're, we're doing a little bit, a lot more calling with hands that flop decently well, three betting, again, the hands on the cusp. And this is gonna be a strategy that is pretty difficult to take advantage of. And that's what you want to do. You want to be difficult to take advantage of. You don't want to be easy to play against. And that's really the thing that a lot of people do who only three bet the best hands is they're easy to play against. So yes, they may be like the absolute worst players, but they have almost no chance at all to move up and to succeed. And my job is not just to teach you to beat one to no limit, I'm trying to teach you all to make a substantial amount of money from poker. I mean, many of my students I've taken from being roughly break-even players to now they win $100 an hour playing 510 at their local casino every day. And that's substantial because if you can go and show up and put in a solid eight hour day, you're making $800 a day. I mean, I don't even know what that is. It's like 240K a year just playing, you know, kind of full time. And that is my goal. So if we get four bet, do we fold the hands in blue? Yes, that is a very clear distinction. If we do get four bet, we fold the hands in blue. It depends on exactly the scenario. Like if someone behind us four bets, maybe we fold out even a little bit tighter. But really the purpose of three betting the hands in red is that you don't have to fold them to a four bet, right? You wanna make your decisions very clear. And like if say you did three bet uh, King Jack suited. So if someone raises, you three bet King Jack suited and they four bet you small. Well, you're actually in a pretty rough spot where it's kind of close to break even, right? But if you three bet the queen eight suited, you just know to fold when you get four bet. How do we adjust the stacks are deeper? You're probably going to want to start three betting a little bit less 
and um, flatting more when you're in position. Basically because you're just going to be able to call a lot and realize your equity. That said, it really does depend a ton on the opponents and their strategies. So definitely keep your opponent's strategies into, or take your opponent's strategies into account. All right, next, you need to defend more often against continuation bets. Now you may say, how do we do that? Well, first thing you have to understand is that most players continuation bet far too often. Maybe they read my first tournament book where I advocate continuation betting nearly 100% of the time because people fold too often. So against people who continuation bet too often, do not overfold, especially when you're heads up. Overfolding meaning folding way more often than you should. It's beyond the scope of this video, but we discuss minimum defense frequency extensively at pokercoaching.com and when it applies and when it doesn't. But if you find that you're just folding everything besides a pair and better on the flop, or maybe if you're even folding some pairs, you're probably folding way too often, especially if your opponents are using small bets. Now, I do know that in many cash games, someone will raise this $8 pre-flop, the big blind will call, flop will come, you'll check the big blind, the opponent will then bet like $20, like a big bet, right? When your opponent's continuation betting for a much larger size, you don't have to defend nearly as often compared to if they bet $6 into the pot. And this is why you actually see a lot of the best players using small continuation bets, especially when it's kind of hard for the opponent to hit the board, because, like, what are they going to do? They don't have anything, yet you're betting small, so they're supposed to call with, like, king high, and people just don't call with king high. So you can apply a lot of pressure to them against people who fold too often. So in general, this is a broad generalization, but any pair, flush draw, straight draw, or decent backdoor draw is usually good enough to continue with. And don't think continue means call, right? You need to be raising the flop with the hands that have any equity at all. And uh, this really, this could be the optimal strategy against people who continuation bet too often because the people who continuation bet too often also have too much junk in their range, right? And if they have too much junk in their range, they're not going to defend well against you. Let's see, what fold versus three bet frequencies would you adjust between a linear and polarized range it depends on the scenario right like if you think your opponent's going to call you every single time you three bet you just three bet a whole lot of strong hands with a nice linear range so it's a very that's a very generic question that is not so easy to answer because it depends a lot on what your opponent's strategy is all right so let's take a look at this example under the gun plus one raised we defended the big blind with nine seven of spades which i think is probably fine if the rake is particularly high, you could also just fold. Like say your opponent makes it $8 preflop or $15 preflop, you should just fold, right? But if your opponent uses a standardish size of $5 or $6 preflop, you can definitely call 9-7 to spades. All right, flop comes. 8-5-2, giving us a gut shot. And that's it. We check our opponent bets $10. Now here, this is a scenario where if your opponent's range is very, very tight, like literally only the best hands, then you should probably just fold. But if your opponent's raising from early position, middle position, with stuff like queen jack suited, and um, pocket fours, and ace nine offsuit, and stuff like this, if they're you know playing a reasonable range, they're gonna have a whole lot of misses on eight five two. If you had a backdoor flush draw, let's say one of these cards was a spade, I would essentially never fold. So in this scenario, I'm doing a whole lot of check raising. We discussed this thoroughly in the pokercoaching.com homework challenges where we discuss structuring your range such that you're very difficult to play against. And in scenarios like this, you can have something like two thirds of your check raising range be bluffs or you know semi bluffs. Very rarely, you're gonna find, do you want to just be running total bluffs? Obviously there are essentially no total bluffs on this board. I mean, if I guess if you had something like 10, six offsuit, that's a pretty bad one. But most of the bluffs here, or all of the bluffs you're going to want to use here are gonna be a straight draw to some extent. And that's going to be, a, generally, a general good strategy. It's going to be really hard to play against. And if your opponent does call, you realize which cards are good for you on the turn and which cards are bad, right? So don't be afraid to check raise more often. And the dr junkie draws and the best made hands, again, a polarized range, is usually the best hands to use in your check raising range. Um, next, you need to be value betting more often, especially on the river. So most players will assume that when you bet the river, you have either junk or a premium made hand. A very polarized strategy, right? So this will lead them to call with all their reasonable bluff catchers as long as you don't bet too large. So when you have a hand that is likely best, but 
is nowhere near the nuts, you want to be making a value bet that bluff catchers can call. You want to use a sizing that bluff catchers can call, right? So let's just take a look at an example. In this scenario, I raised preflop from early position with king queen suited, big blind calls, big blind checks the flop, I continuation bet he called. On the turn, he checked, I continuation bet again, notice we're not checking, he calls, river's an eight, or a 10, or a jack, or any other card, probably besides, even a nine I would value bet. I would value bet literally every hand, every card on the river besides exactly an ace. So, in this scenario, we want to bet. And the question is, how much should we bet? Well, it depends a lot on the opponent's strategy. If the opponent is going to call a $70 bet with any king, betting $70 is pretty sweet, right? You just get $70 out of all the kings. And some people will even call the nine if you bet big. Most people though, in this scenario, some, uh, some of them just check raise the flop with all their kings. So that means they have a hand worse than a king. So that's gonna be a lot of nines. How much will a nine call on this river? Well, probably not a ton, right? And for that reason, you probably want to generally bet kind of on the small side, like $25 or $30 in this scenario, especially when you're playing against recreational players or people who are just not that sophisticated. You want to bet a size that their hands that you were trying to get called by will call. You don't necessarily want to think, all right, I want to have a lot of um, bluffs here. Therefore, I need to be betting bigger to make sure I'm balanced. Balance kind of goes out the window when you're playing against recreational players who are just going to make errors, right? So here, I may literally never bluff here with a $25 size. But if I had a hand like Queen Jack and I bet the flop and bet the turn, as very likely I would, I'm going to be using a big size on the river because a big size, maybe all in, two times the pot, is the only size you can use to get your opponent to fold out a king. Now again, of course, if the opponent's just a calling station and he never folds a king, that's not such a good strategy, right? But you always want to take this into account. So Chad says, is 30 to 50% pot good against a recreational player? And um, it depends, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you all, is that it really does depend on what your opponents are doing and what their general strategies are. And you have to figure that out. It's not just, yeah, always bet 30% here. I, I wish poker was that easy. Actually, you know what? I don't wish poker was that easy because if it was, the game would die because it'd be easy. So you need to figure that out. All right. I see lots of you typing in questions in the chat box, not pertaining to this exact scenario, so we will get to that later. Um, would you ever call, instead of check raise, the flop with a gut shot from out of position? Um, usually not. Depends on what kind of gut shot it is, right? All gut shots are not created equally. Let's go back to this hand. Um, imagine we had, in this scenario, jack-10 of clubs or 10-9 uh, of clubs instead. I'd be way more inclined to call that hand than I would 9-7 of spades here, right? Because that hand has more equity. As your draw has more equity or more showdown value, like say ace-3 of diamonds, like I'm never check raising ace-3 of diamonds here because it easily could be the best hand. Whereas 9-7 is just never the best hand. So again, it's not just as easy as check raise with the gut shots, right? But you have to understand that I know that many of you here, because you all tell me, don't check raise the gut shots and don't play aggressively and don't value bet enough. And that is a big, big, big mistake. So let me ask you all a question. We just went over five tips to help you crush the small size cash game. So again, let's reiterate them. Stop calling preflop raises with junk. Stop defending the small blind. Three bet more often preflop. Defend more often against continuation bets. And value bet the river more often. So let me know, were these things helpful? Were these things things that you can apply to your game? If so, type yes in the chat box if you found at least one of these helpful. If you found a lot of them helpful, I guess type a lot. <laughs> and you have to understand that you need to not only know these things are problems. You need to actually implement the strategy changes you need to make to make sure that you are bettering your game, right? If you just listen to me say these things and don't apply it, that's going to be a big problem. And believe it or not, I have way more tips than just these five, which is why I put together a special bundle for you called the Ultimate Cash Game Bundle. So the Ultimate Cash Game Bundle is for anyone who wants to significantly improve their game and crush the small stakes cash games. And 
the medium stakes cash games and eventually the high stakes cash games. And um, now I'd like your permission, if you do not mind, can I take a minute to share what is inside this bundle with all of you? Because I made it just for you. I spend a lot of time working on my training products and I want to do everything in my power to help you become the best poker player you can be. So you all said, yes, I appreciate it. So here is the cash game masterclass. I spent a ton of time making this. I've been putting it off for a while because I've been working on a new way to share all this content with you and a new way to format it. And we have 29 short lessons. They explain to you everything you need to know to crush the small and medium stakes cash games and very likely the high stakes cash games, including talking about equity, talking about pre-flop bet sizing. My favorite section here is the flop where I go in depth on exactly when to continuation bet and how much, right? Because if you think about it, that's all you really have to do to figure out how to win at poker, right? Should I bet? Yes or no? If so, how much? And if you do that right every single time, you're just going to demolish your opponents. And that is what I teach you in the flop section. And then I go through plenty of examples. Um, also, we do the same for the turn through the river. We go through many, many hands using uh, the analysis we use at pokercoaching.com and the homework challenges. Glenn says that you are loving the Cash Game Masterclass. You already have it. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. So that is um, fantastic. But anyway, this is everything you need to know to beat cash games. So that's the first thing you're going to get. Next in the bundle, we have beating five 10 no limit cash games where I review 78 hands from live at the bike. I, they let me use their footage. Thanks to them for that. And the way I went about this is I did not watch these hands ahead of time. So you're seeing my honest first impressions, right? And that kind of is what real poker is. And, um, you need, to, you need to practice, essentially. And going through hands and asking what would I do in these scenarios is a very good way to practice without actually playing. So you're going to get those two things. Total value so far, $1,096. Next, you're going to get crushing small stakes cash games. This is another four-hour webinar where I teach you lots and lots of advice and tips for beating one, two, and two, five no limit cash games. Can't talk. <clears throat> cash games, which is exactly the games that I know most of you are playing. Let's get some water. All right, next. I played one, two no limit cash games and over 15 hours at Borgata, I won $650. It's a pretty solid win rate at one, two, right? And I learned about my opponents and took diligent notes. And I reviewed 30 of the hands that I played there in another cash game webinar where, again, you all tell me some of the advice you give for high stakes tournaments and cash games may not be applicable for these one, two, no limit games. And I get it. So I went and I played those exact games and took notes, took lessons, and, um, you know, I, I, I developed lessons out of that and it was very helpful to the students. So um, one tip that I think is fantastic, I did just the other day at 2.5, when people are limping a lot, it goes limp, 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 and you have something in the small blind or the big blind that is you know, kind of junky. Yesterday I did it with jack six suited. There were like three limpers. I'm in the small blind, jack six suited. You can limp if you want, but I think a better play, some portion of the time, not always, is to raise to about 45 or $50, about nine or 10 big blinds. And what's gonna happen is either one person's gonna call and everybody else is gonna fold, in which case you just continuation bet the flop. And if they all fold, that's usually what's gonna happen. That's also fantastic. So I go through lots of tips like this and I give very clear hand examples explaining how to do it. So, so far you're gonna be getting the cash game masterclass, the beating 510 cash games, crushing small stakes cash games, and the live one to no limit cash game where I review all of my hands. Next, another live at the bike series where I review every hand from a long 5, 10, no limit session. This includes players like Matt Salzberg, who is the World Poker Tour Player of the Year, Lily Coletto, who I just commentated on the other day at um, Hard Rock. She was playing a 2550 game, and also Ebony Kinney. So there's over four hours of 5, 10, no limit reviews there. So again, that means you're going to be getting the Cash Game Masterclass, the Beating 5, 10, no limit cash games, Crushing Small Stakes cash games, Live 1, 2, no limit cash games, Live at the Bike, and there's still a lot more room on the screen. Let's see what else we have. We have the Live at the Bike 
three bet home game where I review every hand from a live one three cash game that I played on Live at the Bike along with Jason Kuhn, who's just crushing it, Scott Clements, Jeff Gross, and Kyle Julius. And this was one of those examples of me playing in a game that was generally kind of loose, kind of splashy, kind of aggressive, and difficult to play in, really. And uh, that is what some games are. I know a lot of you play in home games where the action is crazy. And if that is you, this is the perfect webinar for you. Next, combating limpers. Something else you all tell me that you, I do not encounter so much at the high stakes games, but I know all of you do. I teach you how to deal with any limper you're going to be running into. I'm going to teach you how to play whenever they have, the, or how to, how to play the premium made hands, the decent hands, draws, total trash. And I review 20 in-depth hands that illustrate these principles so that you never have to worry about how to play against limpers again. I realize that um, when people limp, it, it creates a lot of interesting dynamics, kind of weird dynamics. And I don't want you to have to worry about that. And I mean, just, just a second ago, I told you what I do to limpers whenever I have a, a hand that's not quite good enough to call, right? We raise them. Next, we have my live No Limit Cash game where I discuss all sorts of tips and tricks to help you crush the cash games. This is the section I'm particularly most proud of here is adjusting to your opponents. I go through lots and lots of information on how to adjust to the player types you're most likely to encounter, including the tight passive players, the loose passive players, the tight aggressive players, the loose aggressive players, the calling stations, and the maniacs. And if you can learn how to adjust a good fundamentally sound strategy like I teach in the masterclass to those particular players, you will be unstoppable and you will just print all the money. So, so far, here's what we're gonna be getting. We're getting the cash game masterclass, beating 510 no limit cash games, crushing small stakes no limit, Live No Limit 1-2, Live at the Bike with my review, the 3-Bet Home Game, Combating Limpers, and my No Limit Cash Game webinar. Next, Beating Loose Live Cash Games. This is similar to the 3-Bet um, the Home Game, except for, you know, I realize not all cash games are absurd like the 3-Bet home, home Game was. And also, all cash games are not exactly, you know, normal run-of-the-mill games. So, I specifically found a game where the people were a little bit loose, a little bit too creative, but not insane. And I reviewed that for you, again, over two hours of five, 10, no limit reviews. Also, how to beat wild games. Here, I reviewed lots of hands from the Stones Gambling Hall uh, stream. Stones Gambling Hall is a great casino in Sacramento. And there, they have players who play pretty loose, pretty splashy. And I teach you how to play people who are gonna be playing literally any two cards. These people were insane. I don't know why they were insane. And um, you gotta know how to beat those players. Next, this last course, it's brand new. It is not taught by me. It is taught by my student, Just GTO, who is a very good six max no limit player. And so this is a course on how to beat online six handed cash games taught by Just GTO. It covers GTO preflop strategies, which are, which are actually quite in depth in-game GTO theory analysis and single for single raise pots, three bet pots, and four bet pots, and also an interactive hand review using GTO solvers. So this is, if you want to take it to the next level, learn how to play really strong, fundamentally sound strategies such that your opponents cannot do anything about what you are doing. Because at the end of the day, if you have a strategy you can just sort of revert to, fall back on, that you know is going to crush your opponents, that's pretty nice. It's easy to sleep at night whenever you know the play you made. Maybe it was not possibly the best, but it certainly cannot be bad. And then this is a very, this teaches you a very solid default strategy that you can start with and then adjust from that will crush your opponents. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get the cash game masterclass, the beating five to no limit cash games, the crushing small stakes cash games, the one to no limit cash game webinar, the live at the bike webinar, I view lots and lots of live at the bike hands, the three bet home game, combating limpers, because again, I know limpers give a lot of you fits. The live no limit cash game webinar where I give tons of tips and explain how to beat all the specific player types, beating loose live cash games, how to beat the wild games, and also the course by just GTO, how to beat online six max cash games. So all of this totals 2,100 
$21 in value. And think about this. What if all this did was just help you eliminate one leak in your game immediately? And that would increase your win rate, right? So like what would getting rid of one leak do? What would that be worth? What if it would help you identify and exploit your opponent's biggest mistakes? Like you just see, hey, this guy's about to run a big bluff, as you will very often see in cash games, especially when there's a straddle, which I discussed thoroughly in the cash game masterclass. Very often you see the straddler about to run a big bluff or someone on tilt about to run a big bluff. What if you knew exactly how to exploit that as opposed to just guessing, right? What if this helped you book just one more winning session each month over the next six months? Not even all that often, right? What is that worth? Well, it's probably worth more than $99, right? And that is what we're gonna charge for all of this content that you can study, learn from, and implement into your strategy. So you can go to pokercoaching.com slash cash right now. Make sure you use the coupon code cash to get that. So now you have four choices. First, you can just do nothing, show up and play your best, continue to get the same results that you've been getting. Hey, which is fine if that's what you want. I realize a lot of poker players out there don't want to spend time working on their game. And my, my work is not for you, right? And that's okay. Next, you can hire a private coach like me for $500 an hour. That is what I charge. I am overbooked. And I realize again, that's not for everyone. I have spent tons of money on private coaching, $25,000 or so, and it has been well worth it. I mean, view it like college tuition, right? I essentially paid 25K, got a job that makes me tons of money, and it's worked out great. And that, that's certainly a good option. Next, you can try this ultimate cash game bundle for $99 risk-free for 30 days. If you don't like it, just return it. And you'll get over 38 hours of training that will help you cash crush the cash games up to 510 no limit, which again, if you just get good at 510 no limit like I used to be, you can sit there, grind out a nice $100 an hour, which provides you a very solid living, $240,000 or a year or more, just by playing poker, which is what I want for all of you. And again, if you don't love it, I don't want your money. I only want to provide you values that give, that add value, right? My job is to add value to you. Finally, though, you have one other option. You can sign up for Poker Coaching Premium. There, you get all of this, the ultimate cash game bundle, everything we just went through. Imagine that times five or six. You also get the ultimate world series of bundle, the ultimate main event bundle, my Excelling at No Limit 14 webinar bundle where I host 14 webinars with many of the best players in the world, and also my Triton $1 million buy-in tournament review that I just made the other day. If you're already a Poker Coaching Premium member, all of this is available to you in the classes section. So you may ask, what is Poker Coaching Premium? Why do I want this? Well, Here's what all you get. First off, members get instant access to over 500 in-depth quizzes where it's like me or one of our other coaches sitting over your shoulder and telling you what to do. We have over 150 video classes, kind of like the first uh, 20 or 30 minutes of this webinar where I go through very specific things to help you improve your skills. We have over 40 challenge webinars where I present a rough, as a tough situation to play, where I ask how to play your whole range. And if you've never done that type of exercise, this will be eye-opening to you and teach you how to balance your range, how to get out of line to exploit your opponents, and how the best players in the world are approaching poker and what they're thinking about when they're actually sitting there at the table thinking. Also, we have preflop range charts, GTO implementable preflop range charts for 100 big blinds, 25 big blinds, 15 big blinds, 40 big blinds now. They just got added the other day. Um, they also get two live coaching webinars every month, kind of like this, usually a bit longer. Also, two video classes each month by me. I make them, again, kind of like this. One new challenge webinar every month and at least 15 new quizzes. This is over 124 hours of poker training included at pokercoaching.com slash cash. So this is what you get if you sign up to Poker Coaching Premium. It's a $4,678 value. As you see, I'm not going to read through all this. These webinars right over here on the side, I think, are particularly awesome because you don't get just my perspective, you, but you get the perspective of many of the best players in the world, like Olivier Bousquet, one of the best heads-up players in the world, discussing, well, his area of expertise, heads-up strategy, right? 
We have Mike Sexton going through hands from his World Poker Tour win. We have um, Ed Miller discussing the information paradigm. Anyway, we have all sorts of content there so you can find exactly what you need to get better at poker. And I realize all of you are not cash game players, so you want tournament stuff. There's tons of tournament stuff there. All of you are not tournament players. You want cash game stuff. I have plenty of that too, right? I want to have a resource available to you that gives you exactly what you need to become the best poker player you possibly can be. And all that is available to you at pokercoaching.com slash cash. Whenever you sign up, here's where you will find all of these classes. They are in the courses and bundle section. Also, you see all these other tabs, right? All of these are um, additional webinars. We discuss finances. We go through individual hand histories. We have adjustments to specific players. We discuss technical skills. We discuss all sorts of stuff over at Poker Coaching Premium. So check it out. All of that is available for just $99. So you can either get this bundle or you can um, sign up for Poker Coaching Premium and get all of that additional content. So I know at the start of this webinar, I told you about my cash game cheat sheet. And here's where you can go to get it. PokerCoaching.com slash cash cheat sheet. What I strongly suggest you do is... Look this over every single time before, during, and after you play a cash game. I have all sorts of tips on there for things you should be doing before you play, things you should be doing while you're playing, and things you should be doing after you're playing. So go there, get it, and it is completely free. PokerCoaching.com slash cash game cheat sheet. So now I want to open up that to some questions. I know that you all have lots of questions for me. If you've not already, Go ahead and go over to pokercoaching.com slash cash and let me know. Let's see. If you already are a Poker Coaching member, do you get a discount on Poker Coaching Premium? You do. But that'll be added automatically whenever you go to check out. As far as I know, if you have any questions, please email us at support at pokercoaching.com. On a 1, 2, or 1, 3 table, what's the best buy-in amount to start with? Well, it depends on your seat. I actually discussed this thoroughly in the Cash Game Masterclass where basically... If the good players are on your left with deep stacks and the bad players are on your right with shallow stacks, you want to have a shallow stack. If um, the bad players have all the chips, you probably want a deep stack, right? It's not just as easy as buy-in for the maximum or anything like that. People who say that are not thinking thoroughly about the exact scenario. What if you're playing in a game where the standard raise is 12 to $15 at 1-2, so they're blasting it? In those scenarios, simply fold a lot. Let's see what else you all are saying. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through all of, all of your comments. I appreciate all the comments, by the way. Please take your money. Well, listen, like I said, if my work does not provide you value, I do not want your money. Obviously, I realize for $99, if you can't make an additional $99 profit off of this material, you're not really trying all that hard. And... If you don't think it's worth it, I don't want it, right? I want to help you become the best you can be. So, again, check it out, pokercoaching.com slash cash, 30-day money-back guarantee. Glenn says you're about three-fourths the way through the Cash Game Masterclass. It is the best thing you've ever seen. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Paul says, for years, you lost most of your money on the river in every session by not betting for value and had the best hand and seemingly always betting or calling when you're beat. Watching this video has helped you a lot and has helped you fold losers. Yeah, it's a, you don't need to don't need to be putting your money in with a loser. I say a large part of cash games is learning what kinds of opponents you're playing, but you've he never heard the process of how to do that. We discussed that thoroughly in, which one of these is it? I think it's um, the live cash game webinar. So go check that out. Are all, is all of this available for poker coaching members? It is. Let's see, is straddling decent on occasion to diversify your range? It doesn't really diversify your range. It just makes you put a lot of money in from out of position. Um, no, but generally, no. You do not want to be um, straddling. I discussed this again thoroughly in the Cash Game Masterclass. There's a whole section on straddling. And the basic answer is you don't want to do it. <laughs> because think about where you lose money in No Limit Hold'em. If you study range... Uh, if you study how each position wins or loses money, you only really lose money from the small blind and the big blind. So what do you really not want to do? Well, you don't want to take 
one of your positions that's profitable and make it immediately unprofitable, right? And the easiest way to do that is to straddle, so don't straddle. Don't put money in blind from out of position. That is detrimental to your results. Let's see here, 15 big blind per 100 winner at five cent, 10 cent. Can you beat one, two, no limit? You think the skill is equal, but the rake is higher. Yeah, I mean, I would tell you to get in there and experiment, Dev. I don't exactly know what or how the players in your one, two game are playing, but I bet five cent, 10 cent is actually way softer than one, two live because people live, they just mess up all the time. Whereas I know online games, they're starting to get a little bit tough. You have to play pretty well to beat online poker now, whereas um, live poker is still relatively soft. So I would tell you to get in there and experiment. $8 rake is a little bit high for one, two. It's probably a lot high, but it's not obscene. Let's see. Would you say it's better for improving the game at lower stakes? What should you do? Should you add more tables or play fewer tables? Fewer tables are definitely better. Let's see. Some of you are saying the cheat sheet link is not working. Well, that's not good. We'll get it to you. If you are in this webinar, we will um, get it to you. Send us an email, support at pokercoaching.com. If the cheat sheet link is not working, let me take a note to make sure we get that fixed. Because I want to make sure I get everything that I tell you. I would go fix it myself right now, but I'm in the middle of a webinar. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Would I ever be willing to do a meetup game in Vegas? Sure. Get it. Figure out a way to set it up for me, and I'm happy to do it. In a high rate game, is it better to raise more than three times the big blind preflop? Yes, it is, because you want the pot to be big. If the pot is not big, well, essentially, whenever, whenever you raise big, what happens is the rake is roughly the same, right? Because imagine at 2.5, you make it $15 preflop. The pot goes to 30-something. They take 10%. It's, three, it's $4 already. But if they're capped at $5 and you make it 25 preflop and you get the same amount of action... The rake's the same, but you just got more money in the pot as a favorite. In a recent Borgata 1-2 session, you lost two big pots, calling down with top pair marginal kicker against players who were clearly super tight, but their turn and river sizing made it so you didn't have to be good very often. Is that an error? Yeah, probably is an error. Look, a lot of people just don't triple barrel bluff ever. It's a big, big, big um, mistake in their game, so you should adjust and not pay them. Let's see... All right, all right, all right. Yes, I apologize, everyone. We will find the cash game cheat sheet. Apparently, this link works. Try floattheturn.com slash cash game cheat sheet. So instead of pokercoaching.com, try floattheturn.com slash cash game cheat sheet. The actual link is cash game cheat sheet. There you go, pokercoaching.com slash cash game cheat sheet. Sorry about that. I have my team working on it as we speak. Thank you, team. <laughs> Um, let's see. What order do I suggest watching the cash game package? First things first, check out the cash game masterclass. This is one of my best works I've ever done in terms of being very comprehensive, right? It is a thorough, in-depth course to help you have no questions at all about cash games. Because my goal is to give you all the tools you need to succeed. So I would tell you the very first thing to do is watch the Cash Game, Cash Game Masterclass. Don't just binge it, right? I mean, actually take a little bit of time, go through it, study, go back, make sure you understand everything. And if you do that, you are going to be better than almost everyone you encounter at the poker table. Link is working fine. All right, good. Pokercoaching.com slash Cash Game Cheat Sheets. There you go. Let's see. Andrew says, you're playing a hand. You raised a 35 preflop of queens, flop king, 10, 6, 4, you checked, he bet, you raised, he went all in for 400, and you called, and he had a flush draw. What do I think? I would just continuation bet the flop. Um, 10, 6, 4, we're going to break this down just like we do at PokerCoaching.com right now. 10, 6, 4 is a relatively uncoordinated board. Um, you didn't list positions, but I'm presuming if the guy was in the big blind, yes, he can have some two pairs or whatever. Oh, no, he must have been in position against you. If he's in position against you, this board is pretty dry and doesn't connect very well with anyone. So you just want to be betting pretty frequently using a medium size. When you check raise, that's okay when the board is very coordinated. But in general, you're probably just going to bet because I'd, especially in small states cash games, I don't think that you can count on your opponent's betting every time you check to them. I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit too passive. And if they're a little bit too passive, it's going to go check, check a lot. And you really don't want that. So I would just bet. Once you check raise any jams, you have an easy call. Anytime there are a lot of potential draws available, as there are on 10-6-4 with 
two hearts anytime there's any flush draw available. You really don't want to be folding over pairs when you're only playing 80 big blinds deep or 100 big blinds deep, give or take. For tables with several limpers who overfold to a raise, how important is it? Or how important is position for raising with the bottom end of your range? Like King Jack offsuit. That's not the bottom. <laughs> Should we choose to do it on the button and not the small blind? Well, listen to that example I just gave earlier where just yesterday, somebody, uh, three people limped. I raised from the small blind with Jack six suited to $45. And they all folded, right? I thought they were going to overfold and they did overfold. And that is exactly what you want to be doing to these players. And like, what is the bottom of your range? If you think they're going to be folding like literally 90% of the time each, there is no bottom of your range. It could be any two cards. I typically prefer using some sort of a blocker like Jack six suited. Um, when you like, when you raise King Jack off suit, it's almost like you're value betting, right? So um, I guess the question is if you're three betting for value or raising for value with stuff like King Jack off suit, perhaps using a different sizing to try to get called, then um, perhaps, yeah, stuff like King Jack off suit. I, I think it is better to be in position, but it's not actually all that relevant. Um, like King Jack offsuit, if you're raising out of position, I think that's still fine if they're very loose, right? Let's see. If you all have any questions about this bundle, by the way, send us an email at support at pokercoaching.com. We will answer any of those questions. But multiple players limp to you at 1-2 and you make a pot size raise, the whole table calls. How do you handle this? Well, Sean, just stop bluffing. You don't need to bluff if they're just going to call you every time, right? So start raising with a very linear range of just... Aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines. Ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, and king, queen. Raise that. They're going to call you with all sorts of junk, and you're going to be in position in a big pot with a substantial edge. That's exactly what you want. A lot of people get in their minds that um, they don't want to have multiple callers, but like if they're going to call you with ace, four offsuit, and jack, seven suited, you don't really care. You want them in with those pots because you have to realize that you are essentially going to put in let's say 20 percent of the money but you're going to win like 33 percent of the pot so yes it's only 33 percent you're not a favorite to win well you are the favorite you're not over 50 percent to win but you've put in so little money compared to your opponents like to what they've all put in together they have an overlay in the pot and that is fantastic let's see when you move from online to cash at borgata how long did it take you to to turn player tells into a plus EV part of your game? I mean, I, I was always a tournament player for a long time. I was pretty bad at tells initially, but I studied what I could. Um, in my book, Excelling at No Limit Hold'em, there's a chapter on tells that I definitely suggest you check out. Also, in, well, in all my books. Also, in the uh, Cash Game Masterclass, there's a whole section on tells. And if you pay attention and actively keep your eyes open, that will allow you to spot tells on your opponents and adjust to exploit them. What a lot of people do, though, is they end up like looking at their cards and the felt and the board only, and they don't ever look up at their opponents. But um, it's important to pay attention to your opponents. Rhino says, Rhino? Rhino? Rhino says, it's 2 a.m. where you are. Thanks for these lessons. You already, you've already gone from being a losing player to break even. And that is actually a big success for a lot of people. A lot of my students don't really mind going from breaking even or losing to breaking even. I mean, imagine you are a player who literally loses 500 or 1000 bucks every week playing poker. If you can go from losing 500 bucks a week to not losing 500 bucks a week, well that just saved you $25,000 in a year. And it's not all that hard to go from break even to losing and I am very confident that the material I have can teach you to do that. And again, if you don't think it does, it has a completely free a completely uh, a 30 day money back guarantee, so you don't have to pay me. For the remainder of this webinar, is it quit Q&A? Yes. How much longer will this run? I don't know. Tell I'm done answering questions. <laughs> big hands in early positions are some of your biggest losers. That's probably not true, Jennifer. You're probably exaggerating because if you look at anyone's results using um, hold a manager or something like this, you will find that the best hands always win. Like you're referring to kings and ace-queen suited. You legitimately cannot lose with kings and ace-queen suited unless you just play horribly. So, should you raise much bigger to try to get people to fold? No. Jackie says, when I talk about defending number more, or defending more in tip number four, should you be defending with stuff that just doesn't have a whole lot of equity? No. You can fold out your absolute misses, but realize that you may view like a gut shot or a backdoor flush draw on overcards as an absolute miss, but it's not. 
Do I still believe on keeping a range tight from early position? Yeah. And most creative plays are made from the cutoff, hijack, button, etc. That is absolutely correct. You don't need to play bad cards from early position because you're raising or playing hands with loads and loads of players yet to act, right? And against, um, whenever you're taking a your hand against all the players yet to act, you really need something pretty good. But if it's just like you on the button against two other people in position, that's fine. How does my strategy adjust for playing like uh, spread limit games? It depends on what the spread limit is. I mean, you say you're playing one two with a hundred dollar max. I mean, you're really ask yourself how often am I making bets bigger than a hundred dollars in one two no limits? Like almost never. So that really should not change much at all. Um, Josh, I'm not exactly sure what you're saying pertaining to, to leading or pertaining to ranges whenever people raise big, but you may be playing too tightly. I'm not sure. All right. Again, some of you asking questions about the bundle and about Poker Coaching Premium, please send an email to support at pokercoaching.com and we will certainly answer it. Brian says, if the draw does not hit on the turn in the river, are we still betting and, um, or, and playing aggressively if we check raise the flop? If you check raise the flop with a gut shot and the turn is a card that is good for your range, which is a card that completes any of the draws, not just yours, um, very often you do want to keep betting. Say you flop a backdoor flush draw and turn a flush draw, you definitely want to keep betting for the most part. Um, we discuss this thoroughly in the Cash Game Masterclass with a lot of examples. Um, but essentially, yeah, you need to keep bluffing sometimes. But you do need to give up with some bluffs on the river, especially when the turn and the river are very, very bad for your range and good for your opponent's range. So it's not all about what are my two cards. It's about how do my cards and my range interact with this board and how does my opponent's cards and range interact with this board. And again, the flop section on Poker Coaching or in the uh, Cash Game Masterclass on PokerCoaching.com goes into this in depth. How do you know when to call it quits in a single session? What I would always do when I played at Bellagio every day is I would show up at noon and play until midnight. And I did that every day. And um, very rarely would I stay later. If I lost something like $4,500, I would usually quit. So 450 big blind downswing, I would usually pack it up. But even then, that was like almost never. So uh, I, I was, I've never been one to play like gigantic long sessions. I just don't see the purpose in that, especially when the game's going to be there all the time. What's a good number of hands to play when it comes to cash games? It depends on what you're trying to accomplish, right? Can I show the slide with the five tips again? I don't know. I think I maybe lost it. Let's see. We have to go way back. I was providing too many things for you all. All right, let's see. Whoops. Here they are. Stop calling preflop raises with junk. Stop defending the small blind. Three bet more often, defend more often against continuation bets, and value bet the river more often. Why are some players successful in tournaments but not cash? Because they don't realize that they are different games. One time someone came up to me and said, I'm going to go play some limit hold'em to get warmed up for no limits. That's kind of like saying, I'm going to go play some basketball to get warmed up for football, right? That's asinine. And thinking that no limit hold'em cash games, no limit hold'em tournaments are the same just because they both have no limit hold them in them is a big mistake. Let's see. Nice webinar, says Linwood. Well, thank you very much. I do my best. If you all have any feedback, please let me know. Some poker rooms, a lot of button straddle. Would you ever consider it? Yes, when you're very deep stacked and the players play particularly poorly, it's definitely fine to straddle the button, but you have to be very deep. Um, is this a DVDs or a, or a website? This is a, these are downloads. You can go and you can get the videos and um, you download them to your computer or you stream them on your computer. You stream them on the internet. Uh-oh, what happened there? Did we lose the video? We'll be back in just a second. Let's see. Clearly, clearly, I'm not a pro at uh, PowerPoint. We'll get there one day. Look at all these slides I made for all of you. Hope you all appreciate these webinars. They take a lot of work for me and my team, but I'm happy to do it for all of you. Oh, here's the cheat sheet if you want it. PokerCoaching.com slash cash game cheat sheet. All right, let's see. What's the best strategy with, eight, with good hands from early position where you know you're going to be called by at least four or five people? Just raise your normal amount. You don't care if you get called by a lot of people when you crush them, right? 
You've heard conflicting GTO advice, well then, one of them is not GTO, about whether to keep the pot small when three betting out of position. But conventional teachers say to re-raise bigger from out of position, such as 3x to 5x. Um, GTO strategies are to three bet pretty big from out of position. If somebody raises and you three bet the small blind and you're playing 100 big blinds deeper or more, very often it should be something like four times the, um, the initial raise. So if somebody makes it $6 at 1-2, you want to make it about $24 from out of position. So that, that's, that's just good poker. As you're deeper and deeper stacked from out of position, you want to be re-raising ra rather large. 1-3, standard raises from 10 to 16. If you raise to 9 or 10, everybody calls. If you raise to 13 or 3-bet, are, are these raise amounts okay? They're perfectly fine. Look, it's okay to get called a lot. Get over it. Yeah, you have to play better post-flop, but you need to learn how to play better post-flop. Let's see. Char solver su choose suited wheel aces for bluffing. Um, solvers choose the bottom of your continuing range to bluff. Which often is a suited wheel aces. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Let's see. What's the fastest way to build a bankroll? Chad, this is very easy. Find a game you can beat and then play it a ton. Figure out your return on investment and um, work very hard. Put in a lot of time. What services can we use to pay for this? You can use a credit card or you can use PayPal, as far as I know. If you need any other options, send us an email to support at pokercoaching.com and we will figure it out. Let's see. Ah, I keep saying cash game cheat sheets. Oh, yeah, right. I can't read. Pokercoaching.com slash cash cheat sheet. Now I see where the confusion came from. Sorry, everyone. What is the pricing on pokercoaching.com? It is $99 per month. And when you sign up, you get access to, goodness, I don't even know how, much hour, how many hours we said, loads and loads and loads of content. And again, I know whenever people go to pokercoaching.com, they sometimes get overwhelmed and they think, oh my gosh, this is so much content. How am I ever going to get through it all? And realize you don't have to get through all of it. You just need to get through what you need. And very often, you know what you need. But I definitely suggest everyone who is signing up today to, get the cat, to go through the Cash Game Masterclass first. That's going to give you a solid foundation so that you know where to start from and then where to deviate to. Let's see. You progress to the point that you're profitable at 1-2. Good. You want to move to the next level. Cash Game Masterclass is for you, Gary. What do you do with Ace-King when you get 5-bet and micro stakes? It depends on your opponents, Dev. That's not a very good question. Who are you against? What's their strategies? <laughs> both links work now. <laughs> cash game cheat sheet and uh, cash cheat sheet both work. Thank you, Dan, for being on the ball. Jaren says it's your birthday, so you got the bundle for yourself as a birthday present. Awesome. I hope you go from the $100 or the $99 investment to making $99 an hour in no time. What's a good win rate in live cash games? 10 big blinds per hour is pretty solid in live cash games. Can you purchase just the cash masterclass? Well, you can get... Uh, go to pokercoaching.com slash cash, and that is what you can purchase. <laughs> Let's see. What do I think about online poker? When will it be legal in America? I don't know. I'm not a politician, but they're slowly going state by state. Eventually, a lot of the states will get on board, and they'll be good to go. As for starting online player, would you play at a site where heads-up displays are banned or they are allowed? That's a good question, you know, because if you are starting... Probably you're not all that great at poker yet. So you should want to play on a site like Party Poker that does not allow heads-up displays. However, heads-up displays are a great learning tool because you get to see what the best players are doing and then you can model your game after them. Remember how we discussed earlier today that you want to model your game after, after the winning players. And there you can very clearly see who the winning players are and you can figure out what they are doing. That said, all that information is available online. Just GTO with the How to Beat Six... How to Beat Online 6 Max Cash Games teaches that, all the stats you need. And um, I, I guess I would tell you to play on Party Poker. That's really the answer. When win rates are discussed, are they pre-rake or post-rake? Typically post-rake because you don't say I'm winning the rake and then paying it to the casino. Is it best to be the direct right of a, someone who straddles all the time? Uh, no, you'd much rather be on the straddler's left because... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want to go first after the straddler, whatever that means. So I'm not exactly sure the rules of your straddle, but 
You, you don't want to be the one to go first. Going first is awful. <laughs> you don't get a lot of value out of your strong hands because you're too predictable. Well, good. Don't do that. You need to stop being predictable. Any sites to stay away from, the ones that are not regulated and very clearly legal in the jurisdiction where they operate. Those are sites you need to shy away from, in my opinion. Whenever you operate on a site that is perhaps a little bit shady, don't be shocked if shady things happen to you. Um, let's see. You're the only one who adds on to your chip stack whenever you're playing, and some people get annoyed at you. Is that a problem? No, it's not. All right. Well, I think we got through all of your questions. Again, if you have any questions specifically about the bundle, about PokerCoaching.com, etc., please send me an email at support at PokerCoaching.com. I want to make sure you have no questions. And also, whenever you go through the Cash Game Masterclass, send me an email. Send me a message on Twitter, at Jonathan Little, and let me know because I want to see your improvements. I love hearing my students' success stories, and I've already had plenty of my students who I've who had early access to the Cash Game Masterclass. They are loving it. One of my students said that he's been winning an additional $1,000 over the last few weeks since he's had the Cash Game Masterclass, and it's because he's getting way more value on the river, just like we talked about today. And like that alone, I mean, imagine you just get one or two extra river bets playing two, five, no limit. That's like an extra two or $300 every time. And um, that's significant. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, tell your friends. If you didn't, well, <laughs> I'll see you when I see you. So yeah, have fun. Good luck in your games. I hope you have a fantastic week. And again, if you ever have any questions for me, please send me an email to support at pokercoaching.com and I will be very happy to help you out. So again, go to pokercoaching.com slash cash right now to sign up to Poker Coaching Premium and get to work on your cash games. Thanks again for being here. Good luck with everything, and I'll talk to you next time.